This video will walk you through testing assumption number four, which is that the errors are independent, meaning the residuals are independent. So previous observations of a residual do not have any impact on future observations of a residual. Just because my predicted value was off by two last time doesn't mean it's gonna be off by two this time or anything like that. And we're gonna do this using the Durbin-Watson statistic. So I'm gonna show you how in both Excel and SPSS. We're starting here in Excel and we're using the data set Sales Advertising 6. So let's go ahead and run my regression using my dependent variable as sales and my independent variable as advertising. I want to stick this on any open cell and I want my residuals, not my standardized residuals, just my regular residuals. So I'm going to click OK and it creates this data in here for me. Now, I need to create some additional columns in order to do my Durbin Watson statistic. So I will need my lagged residuals and my squared residuals. Okay, lag residuals and squared residuals. Alright, so to get the value of the squared residual, it's literally just the residual squared. And I will copy that down for the additional calculations. Come on, double click. So it does that for each of my observations. Now my lag residual is the value of my previous residual. So I don't have a lagged residual for observation one. The lagged residual for observation two is the residual for observation one. Then the residual, lagged residual for observation three is the residual for observation two, and so on and so forth. Okay, now the numerator of the Durbin-Watson statistic is the difference between its residual and its lag, and then that quantity is squared. So this is numerator calculation. Okay, so the numerator calculation is equal to the residual minus its lag squared. Okay, and obviously I have to start at observation two since I don't have a lag for observation one. And I'm going to copy that down. Okay, now to get the actual numerator of my Durbin-Watson statistic, it is the summation of all of those um, squared deviations. And then the denominator of my Durbin-Watson statistic is the sum of all of the squared residuals. Now, be careful when you're doing the squared residual. Obviously, you have a squared residual for observation one, but you're only gonna go starting at observation two, so we have the same number of actual observations in our numerator and our denominator. So then, our actual Durbin-Watson statistic is equal to our numerator divided by our denominator. And we get 0.52. So, what we need to see here, um, we need to compare this. So, there's not, this is something where you actually have to look it up in a, a table. So, if D is less than DL, reject HO, and conclude that there is positive correlation. If D is greater than DU, do not reject HO and conclude that there is positive correlation. And if D is between DL and DU, the test is inconclusive. Okay, so our D is 0.52. Now, what is this, you know, DL and DU that I'm discussing? In order to find this, we now have 36 or 35 observations. Okay, I'm going to go to my statistical table here 
down to 35 observations, and k is the number of independent variables. So here, dl is 1.402, and du is 1.519. So d is less than dl, because I got 0.52, which is less than 1.4. So I am going to reject HO. HO was that there was no autocorrelation. So I am, in fact, finding autocorrelation in here. So this means I failed my Durbin-Watson test, and I will need to make a correction. The most common correction is to go in and add a lagged observation of the independent variable that's causing the issue. So in this case, we only have one independent variable. I would also include lagged advertising. Okay, now let me show you how to do this same thing in SPSS. I'll bring it up. I'll go into Analyze and then Regression. Oop, not Curves, sorry. Regression Select, Linear Regression. My dependent variable is sales. My independent variable is advertising. Under statistics, I am going to select Durbin Watson in there. I also want the model fit, um, regression estimates, 95% confidence interval. All of that is pretty typical. Um, selecting case-wide diagnostics, outliers outside of three standard deviations. You know, that's that's pretty typical. We know 99% of our observations should be within three standard deviations of the mean. So that'll just come out and report if I do have any outliers in there. Um, it's beneficial, but obviously it's not necessary to calculate the Durbin-Watson statistic. So I'll click Continue and then click OK. And here I have my Durbin-Watson um, calculation that actually comes out right away along with the R squared. Um, and you know the ANOVA output and then my regression coefficients, all of that fun stuff. So this Durbin Watson of 0.467, it's slightly different than what I got, and that's really just a function of using Excel versus SPSS. You, I've never come across a situation where you come up with a different conclusion. The um, the differences are going to be really slight, but again, our critical values for 36 observations were a DL of 1.41 and a DU of 1.52. So again, here with 0.467, we are going to reject HO and conclude that we do in fact have an autocorrelation problem with this data.